I auditioned for Silence. I hadn't had an audition in a bunch of years. So I read the script and I read the book and it's a poem, a prayer, it's a long meditation. It's not something you often get to deal with in, in cinema. Only the greats get to deal with that kind of material, like Mr. Scorsese. I had a feeling that I was the right person for it. And that doesn't, I don't get that very, feeling very often. More often than not, I'm saying, oh no, this person is, is gonna be better, or this person is gonna be better. It's very rare that I go, oh no, this, this one could be right for me. The majority of the process was praying. <laughs> my, my preparation was a year, I had a year to, to get ready to go and shoot. And I prayed for a year. I never prayed before, really. And I developed a relationship with a, a power greater than myself. Call it God, call it love, call it what you will insert your belief system here. I realize that we're praying all the time. It's just we don't, we're, we're not conscious of what we're praying to. There's that human impulse to worship and to exalt and to long for connection to the divine. We are unfortunately in our culture being um, driven and guided more often than not to worship things that are false and empty, mm -hmm. like celebrity culture, like consumerism, consumer goods, a new pair of shoes, popularity, being uh, a success by what modern standards mean, uh, meaning uh, a nice car, beautiful spouse, uh, mm -hmm. two, two children and a picket fence. These, mm -hmm. are, these are all lies that we've been sold. I had a year of exploring, I suppose, this idea of worship, this idea of what it is that we are truly longing for and how do we actually go to the places that can feed us. It's a killer though, it's a heartbreaker. You never get there. It's a longing pain, it's this beautiful agony um, of, of never ever creating the perfect performance. But th I think that's the point, is that it's never gonna happen. Rug makers in Persia, they would make these beautiful, mm -hmm. ornate, perfected kind of pieces of artisanal craftsmanship, turn over the rug and do a big slash with a knife down the back of it. Just to kind of honor the fact that God is perfect and human beings are not. And the same thing with the theater actors back in the day, they would, they would come out and spit on the stage before every show, just to kind of show irreverence and to acknowledge their own base humanity. It's nice, because it, it lets you off the hook from having to be, having to be the Messiah. My 29th birthday, weirdly, it was perfect, it was heaven. I was with the, my favorite people in the world. Uh -huh. I was with eight of my closest friends. I'm just gonna tell you this straight up. They came out to LA to surprise me. We went to Disneyland and we, we ate pot brownies. It was literally heaven. How about um, Space Mountain three times in a row? And it's a, well, I freaked out on It's a Small World. I was like, it is, it is a fucking small world. But there was a moment where like me and my, like, like eight of my closest friends found us. We didn't even realize anyone else was doing it. We were like walking through Fantasyland and there was a song that was playing out of, coming out of the trees and we were all doing this, like dancing through. And like, I think at one point we all started to look around going, why are we all doing the same dance? How did this happen? And then we just kind of like, it built to this like choreograph kind of like through Disneyland, like these like grown men and women, really fucking high, like, like just like totally just like, what the fuck? And we had this, um, this girl called Chantel. God bless you, Chantel, wherever you are. She was our guide. And I, I, I think she was that innocent and pure of heart that she had no idea that we were on, on drugs. You guys are great. You guys are, I wish all of my, t my, my guys were like you. No, we went back to uh, my house and, uh -huh. and um, talked about how insane that day was. Because we were all going on our, having our own experiences. And I think we all kind of came back going, were you thinking this at the same? And we all realized that we were thinking so many of the same things at the same. This is a stone conversation. Yeah, I think, everyone, I think everyone had a different freak out in a different place. My friend George couldn't handle, um, I can't remember what it was. It was a, but it was a really lame ride. And he was like, you know, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Nah, you got, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just gonna stand over here. If I'm not here, when you come back, be worried. Cause I'm probably going somewhere to do damage to myself. <laughs> like, it was like, it was a really intense day, but we all kind of like had each other's backs. It was really fun, oh my God. I think I almost bought a Chewbacca backpack as well. I was that stoned where I thought it was a good idea to get like one of those backpacks that like are the shape of Chewbacca. So it's like Chewbacca's head right here and his, and his arms are like over my shoulder and his legs right around my, my waist. In retrospect, I should have actually just got it. It's a great backpack, yeah. It's very cute.